We are on the uh, top of Daf Samech Aleph Amid Aleph. And uh, just to refresh your memories, the Gemara had asked the question. The question was, we know that when you have double negative, when it comes to Korban Pesach, which means that you do it Shalom Bizmano and Shalom Lishmo. So then paradoxically, the Korban is a kosher Shlomim. That's what we had established yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. So the Gemara's question then was, well, what if you have a different kind of double negative? It's Shalom Bizmano, and instead of being Shalom Lishmo, no, the guy does know that it's a Korban Pesach, but it's Shalom Lishem Ba'olav. It's not for the sake of the person who's the owner of that Korban. He shechs it for somebody else. So the question is, <clears throat> is that enough of a double negative to make it kosher, to make it into a kosher shlomim? That was the Gemara's question, and Rava had given the answer. Rava had said, I will give you uh, four reasons why the negative quality of shalom l'shem ba'ala for the wrong person is not a, a strong enough of a negative to create that double negative that gives us a positive kosher shlomim. In other words, only when you have the, the two of Shalom Bizmano and Shalom Lishmo, Shalom Lishmo is such a powerful negative force that when you combine it with the other negative of Shalom Bizmano, that you create the positive kosher shlom. But Shalom Lishem Ba'olav, not for the sake of the, of the owner, knowing that it's still a carbon Pesach, that's not strong enough of a removal of it being a carbon Pesach in order to make it a valid shlom. And therefore, it's still going to be possible. So what were the four distinctions that Rava made? We need to just go over them very, very quickly. Number one is the Gemara had said, the difference is, is that when a person has a machshava shalom lishmo, he's designating the animal itself. It's a psul, the Gemara says, that is intrinsic to the animal. He's saying that that animal is no longer a carbon Pesach, but it's rather a carbon Shlomim. Shalom L'Shem Ba'olav is extrinsic to the animal, which means that you're not thinking about the status of the animal, but you're thinking about the status of the owner. And therefore, it's not, it's not enough of a, um, of, a, uh, of a stigma on the animal itself. That's distinction number one. Distinction number two is yeshno be'arba avodos, that when you have a machshava of shalom lishmo, that machshava will invalidate the carbon in at any stage of the of four stages of avoda, whether it's during the shechita, the kabbalah, the holacha, or the zrika. Whereas when it comes to the shalom l'shem ba'alav, for the wrong per- thoughts for the wrong person, that only invalidates the carbon if the machshava is during the zrika is during the Zrika Saddam, which is the time of the atoning factor or the completion factor of that korban. So that's another reason why Shalom Lishmo is a more powerful force than Shalom Lishem Ba'olav. Number three is V'yeshno La'achar Misa, is that when a person who's the owner of a korban dies and his estate has the responsibility of bringing the korban, then if it's uh, it, it doesn't really make a difference the thoughts of the bringer vis-a-vis the owner of the carbon because now this carbon is ownerless. Whereas when it comes to lishmo or shalom lishmo, if the estate brings the carbon for the decedent with the wrong thoughts as far as the, the, the type of carbon it is, it does invalidate the carbon. So for example, if a man designates a lamb as the carbon Pesach, and then he dies and his son brings it instead, if the son doesn't have the father in mind, it's still a valid carbon Pesach. But if the son says that it's L'shem Shlamim instead of L'shem Pesach, then it's not a valid carbon Pesach. So you see, that's another third reason why the Shalom Lishmo is a more powerful force than Shalom Lishem Ba'olav. And finally, V'yeshno B'tzibur Kibayachid. And that uh, there is a, uh, uh, when it comes to Shalom L'shem Ba'olav, when it's not brought for the right person, that can only be said if it's an individual carbon, where there's a specific owner of that carbon. But if it's a public carbon, it's a carbon seaboard, so then there, it's, it's in a sense ownerless in the, in the sense that it doesn't matter who you're thinking of, it belongs to the entire seaboard. Mm-hmm. And so therefore, Shalom Lishmo applies to its carbon seaboard and a carbon yachid, but Shalom Lishem Ba'olav only applies to a carbon yachid, and that's an, the fourth reason why Shalom Lishem Ba'olav is not as powerful of a negative as Shalom Lishmo. Now, we're up to the uh, fourth line now in the Gemara. The Afal Gav Tarti Lav Davka Tarti Mi Hadavka. 
even though two out of these four arguments as to why Shaloli Shmo is more powerful than Shaloli Shem Ba'olov are not really so solid, two of them are solid, is what the Gemara is basically saying. So what do we mean that two of them are not so solid? The Gemara says, So the first distinction that we drew is that we had said that Shaloli Shmo, uh, when you do it for the wrong carbon, that's a psul that's intrinsic to the animal, whereas l'shalol l'shem ba'alav is extrinsic. It's uh, applicable to the owner, not to the animal. The Gemara says that's an artificial distinction, because in both cases, there's nothing inherent within the animal that disqualifies it from being a carbon. It's all going on in your mind. It's all your thoughts that are creating the psul in the, in the carbon, so it really doesn't make a difference. Usually, when we say an intrinsic psul in the animal, we really either mean a physical defect or some other halachic defect in the animal. Let's say it's, um, uh, it's, uh, it, it, uh, it's, uh, uh, what, what, there are, there are a number of things that are, let's say, non-physical that, uh, that can be attached to the animal. But this is not one of them. This has to do with your thoughts. Just because you're thinking of a different carbon doesn't mean that that's intrinsic to the animal. So the Gemara says, so the, 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 the idea that you're thinking of the animal versus thinking of the owner of the animal, that's an artificial distinction. Both of them are extrinsic to the innateness of the, of the validity, validity of the animal. Visu, furthermore, or let's say another example would be, let's say the animal is less than eight days old, right? That's also, that's something intrinsic to the animal, right? And another distinction out of the four is also really not so solid because you said that one of them is that um, if you if you offer it without the, the uh, my, without thinking of the real owner, uh, then it's only not valid while the owner is alive. But after the owner's death, it's irrelevant. Whereas Shaloli Shmo applies both before death and after death. That distinction is also not so solid because Rav Pinchas Rav Ami Misa But there we have an Amora who says that even after the person has died, it has to be Lishmo. It has to be for his sake, for the sake of that person, for the decedent. And if you didn't do it for the sake of the decedent, it's not a valid carbon. So according to him, there really is no dis- that this distinction does not apply between Lishmo and Shalol Hashem Ba'olav. And therefore, the Gemara says, Tarti mihas daf But the other two are solid distinctions. The other two, which were um, the Yeshno Ba'arba Avodos, that Shalol Shmo applies with all four Avodas, and uh, Shalol Lushem Ba'olav only applies to the Zerika. And uh, the other one is Yeshno B'Tzibor Kibiyachid, that Shalol Shmo applies both to a Karben Tzibor and to a Karben Yachid, and Shalol Lushem Ba'olav only applies to a Karben Yachid. So Ella Amar Rava, so therefore based upon the force of the two out of the four, which are solid distinctions between Shalol Shmo and Shalol Shem Ba'olav, Rava concludes, Pesach Shashachto B'Shar Yimos Hashan B'Shinoi Ba'olim, Nasa Kimi Sheinlo Ba'olim B'Zmano Upasol. That if you ended up shechting a carbon Pesach, not on Erev Pesach, so it's Shalol B'Zmano, and you couple that with the weaker negative of Shalol Shem Ba'olav, not for the sake of the owner, but rather for somebody else, but you still know that it's a carbon Pesach, then it's no different from offering that carbon on Erev Pesach itself, in which case the carbon would be possible. And that's <coughs> the conclusion of the Gemara, <coughs> that it's not just any double negative. You have to have the double negative of Shalom Bismano and Shalom Shmo in order for the animal to be a kosher carbon shlami. But if it's Shalom Bismano and Shalom Lushem Ba'alav, so then it's going to be a puzzle carbon. Let's go on to the next Mishnah. Shachto shalol ochla v'shalol minuyo, that if a person shechts the carbon Pesach for people who are incapable of eating it, or for people who have not been designated as part of the chabura, as part of the group that is is supposed to be part the the owners of this carbon Pesach, la arelim v'latimeim, or if it's shechted for people who are halachically precluded from eating the carbon Pesach meaning uh, uncircumcised people and Tomei people. So then, puzzle. Then the carbon is going to be puzzle because your thoughts were exclusively on individuals who cannot partake of the carbon Pesach. However, la'ochla v'shalol la'ochla v'lemenuyav v'shalol la'menuyav l'mulem v'la'arelem l'atameim v'la'tahorim kasher. If, however, you had a combined thought, 
meaning that you were you had in mind both people who can eat it and people who cannot eat it. You had in mind people who are arelim and people who are mulim who are circumcised, or you had in mind people who are tame, people who are not tame. You had in mind people who are part of the chabura and people who are not part of the chabura. So then, as we learned yesterday, the korban pesach is still kosher. Shechato koidem chatzos pasul. Next halach of the Mishnah is is that if you shech the korban pesach before chatzos ayom on an erev pesach, so then it's going to be pasul. And what is the basis for that? Shenamar bein ha'arbayim. Because the Torah says that it has to be done in the afternoon, and before chatzos is simply not a fulfillment. Shachto kaidem letamid kasher. If you recall, we had said that there are very few things that are allowed to be done after the korban tamid shall bein ha'arbayim, the afternoon korban tamid. But korban pesach is one of those things because it says by korban pesach ba erev and bein ha'arbayim. Right, it says both in the evening or towards the evening and in the afternoon, whereas by the Korban Tumid it only says Bain Har Bayim, so you see that the Korban Pesach is even a later Korban in the day than the Korban Tumid. What happens Bidiyevit if I shechted the Korban Pesach before the Korban Tumid? So it's still kosher. But in that situation, you're still obligated to forego the offering of the Korban Pesach until you offer the Korban Tamid. So what you should do is you should have someone stir the blood of the Korban Pesach that you've collected already so that it doesn't congeal. Then offer the Korban Tamid and then finish the avoda of the Korban Pesach by doing the Zrika and offering the Dama and offering the innards on the Mizbeach. And finally, the Imnizra Kosher and Bidiyevit, even in a situation where you did the Zrika before the Korban Tamid, the Korban Pesach is still Kosher. As long as it's done after Chatzos, even though you didn't do it in the right order vis a vis the Korban Tamid, Bidiyevit, it's still Kosher. So we'll analyze that later. But first, let's go to the first part. Tana Rabbanan, the Brisa says, just Ketzat Shalola Ochla, what's an example of someone who's incapable of eating the Korban Pesach? That we said that if you shecht it for that person, you passel the Korban Pesach. Lishum Chayla or Lishum Zakein. If you shecht it for a sick person or for grandpa who has no teeth and he simply can't eat the carbon pesach, so then the halacha is that it's not a kosher carbon pesach. Ketzat Shalola Minuyav, what's an example of shechting it for people who are not, uh, who are not designees? Nimnu alav chabura zu, ushechato l'shem chabura cheres. That if you had Tom, Dick, and Harry, who were the designees for this carbon, and instead you chose Reuben, Shimon, and Levi, you had those guys in mind when you shechted it, so then... Right, even though they have nice Jewish names, they're still still not uh, still not a kosher carbon because Tom, Dick, and Harry were the designees for this carbon. Now, me know honey, So, w- where in the Torah do we know this idea that if you shecht it for the non-designees, that's not kosher? The Tanur Rabbanon b'michsas. The Torah uses the word b'michsas nefashos that with the michsa of souls you shall shech the korban pesach. Now the word michsas is not easy to translate, but it seems to come from the word like meches, which is a head tax. So it means that there has to be a, a counting of individuals when you shech the korban pesach. pesach nishchad This teaches me that you can only shech it once you've uh, been able to identify who is partaking of this korban. So you might think that that's only a din, but maybe bidiyeved. If you didn't shecht it for for the right people, it's still kosher bidiyeved. Tamulomar b'michsas tachosu. Therefore, we have a double language of b'michsas in the Torah to teach me of shana alav la'akev. And therefore, the Torah repeats that verb to tell you that even bidiyeved, if you didn't do it for the right people, it's going to be possible. Rebbe Omer Lashon Sursihu Ka Adam Shomer Lechavero Kosli Tleze. Rebbe adds that the word Michsas in Syriac means slaughter. And it's as if a, you're saying, slaughter for me, slaughter for me, uh, it's like saying to your friend, slaughter for me that lamb for my sake. No, so Tosfus points out that Rebbe is not disagreeing with the Tanakhama, he agrees that the word michsas teaches that it has to be done specifically for an individual or individuals, but he's just adding that the only time that if you do it shalom liminuyav, it's going to be puzzle, is during the shechita process. That's because the word michsas also implies, in, in the Syrian language, also implies slaughter. 
So therefore, if a person, let's say, were to shecht it for the right people, but when he did the Kabbalah, he didn't have the right people in mind, it would still be kosher. That's all Rebbe is adding, and that's what's going to be confirmed by the Gemara shortly. Now, the Brisa continues, and it says, Ashkechan shalol minuyav shalol ochlov minolan. So that, so far, we've already, we've only established that if you do it for the non-designees, it's puzzle. How do, you know it, how do you know that if you do it for people who are not capable of eating, it's going to be puzzle as well? Because the pasuk connects eating. It says, each person, according to his eating, you shall kos. You shall slaughter or you shall do it for the enumerated ones, the designees. So you see that the Torah connects eating to the designation. And just like designation has to be spe- specific, so too it has to be specified for people who are capable of eating. So now the Gemara asks a question, which is going to be the subject of the rest of the da for today. What would happen in the following case? We've established that the only time that slaughtering it for the wrong people is a problem, uh, uh, doing the avoda for a wrong person is a problem is during the shechita, okay? We've already established that, okay? Now, what would happen if while I'm doing the shechita, I'm thinking that this shechita is for the right people, is for people who are circumcised, okay? But I say to myself, that when I do the zrika, while I'm shechting it, I'm thinking about not only the shechita, but I'm thinking about the zrika that I'm going to do in five minutes from now. When I do that zrika, it's going to be on behalf of Bob, who's uncircumcised. That's my thought. Why I'm thinking that, I have no idea, but that's what I'm thinking, okay? So I only want this carbon to, the zrika of this carbon, I only want it to be for Bob the uncircumcised. That's probably a nice name to go by, Bob the uncircumcised, Bob the RL, right? So, um, so the question is, is that does that invalidate the carbon or not? Because lemaisa, I had the correct machshava for the shechita, but while I'm doing the shechita, I'm having an incorrect machshava for the future zrika. So that's the question. So Rav Chizda Omar Pasul, and Rabba Omar Kasher. Rav Chizda says it's Pasul, Rabba says it's Kasher. Now here is where my machshava for the zrika is exclusively for an oral, for Bob the oral, no one else. Which, if I did that for the shechita, it would be puzzle, right? But for the shechita, I'm okay. It's just for my thoughts for the zrika. The question is, what's the basis of this machlokas for Rav Chista to say it's puzzle and Rabbah say it's kosher? The Gemara is now going to suggest the following argumentation on behalf of both Rav Chista and Rabbah. Rav Chista Amar puzzle, yesh machsheves arelim bizrika. Rav Chista says it's pasul because whatever pasuls you for shechita will pasul you for this, the machshav of zrika as well. And Rabba Omar Kasher, ain't machshavas arelim bezrika. And Rabba says, no, that the machshava of what you're going to do during the zrika is irrelevant and it's not going to invalidate the carbon pesach. So Omar Rabba, mina aminala. So Rabba, Rabba says, how can I prove this to you? Detanya. You might think that a person who is an RL can invalidate other people who are part of his chabura who are circumcised, which means that if the shechita is done for both arelim and for mulim, it'll be invalid. The dinhu, ho'il va'orla poseles, v'tuma poseles, so on the one hand, we have the following argument. We've already established. Where we've established this, I don't know. The Gemara is going to ask that question later on. But the, but the Rabbah says, we've already established that if I shech the carbon Pesach for multiple people, some who are Tameh and some who are Tahar, then the carbon Pesach is kosher. So therefore, it stands to reason that orla, as un, the lack of circumcision, is of the same genre as tuma, and so therefore, just like by tuma, if you shechted some for tame and some for tahor people, it's kosher. So too, if you shechted some for arelim and some for mulim, it's going to be kosher. Oh, klach lederach zu. On the other hand, says the Gemara, I can I can make a different argument. Ho'il vo'orla poseles uzman poisel mazman asaba mixas man kechol zman. Af orla asaba mixas orla kechol orla. 
We have a principle called Piggle, just to explain it very quickly uh, for those who just want a quick review. We're going to elaborate on this momentarily. Piggle is where a person does the avoda with a korban with a machshava of chutz lizmana, where he says, I plan to eat a kezayis of this korban at the wrong time. And the halacha is, is that if a person has that machshava and he goes through with the avoda, even if he doesn't end up eating the, the kezayis, he's, he's, he's chay of kares. He's liable for kares for that machshava pesula. Okay, so um, so the Gemara says, Orla, the, uh, I'm sorry, Pigol is a halacha that applies even if you plan to eat the entire carbon except for one kezayis in the proper time. So you see that even a partial thought of Pigol invalidates the whole carbon. So therefore, it would stand to reason that even a partial thought of Orla, of lack of circumcision for one of for one of the people should create a psul in the entire korban. So the Gemara says, I have, I have two tzdadim, I have two sides. I can either compare orla to tumah, or I can compare orla to pigel. Which one is it more analogous to? Nir la midoma. So let's see what, what it's more comparable to. Don in dover she'enu nohig b'chol azvachim, midover she'enu nohig b'chol azvachim, val yochiach zman she'enu nohig b'chol azvachim. On the one hand, orla is more analogous to tumah. Because the whole din that if a person is uncircumcised, he's not, he cannot be a party to a korban is only true by the korban Pesach. And the same thing is true with Tumah. If a person is Tumah, he cannot be a party to the korban Pesach. That's unique to the korban Pesach. So therefore, maybe it's more appropriate to analogize Orla to Tumah than it is to analogize Orla to Pigel, because Pigel is universal to all korbanas. Or, oh, klach lederech zu. On the other hand, says the Gemara, no. Don in dover shelo hutra michlolo, mi dover shelo hutra michlolo, ve al tochiach tuma shu hutra michlolo. On the other hand, perhaps orla and tuma are not as comparable because tuma, the laws of tuma that we say that if you're tame, you cannot be involved with the carbon pesach. That's not always true. Sometimes we completely suspend the laws of Tuma. If, like we'll learn later on, if the majority of Klal Yisrael are Tame, we allow the Korban Pesach to be brought in a state of complete Tuma. And we don't suspend other psulim like that for any other Korban. For example, if the majority of Klal Yisrael were Arelim, we would not give the dispensation to go ahead and bring the Korban Pesach. If the majority of Klal Yisrael have a machshava of pigel, we don't suspend the laws of pigel. So therefore, in this respect, orla is more comparable to pigel than it is to tumah. So therefore, maybe we should say that even a partial thought of a relus, of non-circumcision, should disqualify the entire carbon. So therefore, because we don't have one way or, or one better logical uh, analogy to make than the other, Therefore, we need a pasuk. Tamuloimar zos. So, therefore, the pasuk says zos. Now, the, what's that pasuk? Zos chukas ha pasach kolorelo yochalbo. This is, shall be the law of Pesach, then any uncircumcised male shall not partake. So, the question now is how do you understand that pasuk of zos chukas ha pasach? The word zos is usually a miut. It's coming to say only this, zos, this and nothing else. So, my zos, what does it mean? If you'll, you'll suggest that the word Zos is coming to tell you that only when every person that you're thinking of is an RL does it make the carbon Pesach puzzle. But if some people are Arelim and some people are Mulim, the carbon Pesach is still kosher. Hi, Mivachol Arel Nafka. You don't need the word Zos to teach me that because the second part of the Pesach says, Kol Arel O Yochelbo. It says, all uncircumcised males shall not partake. So the word kol is coming to teach you that only when everyone that you're thinking of is an RL is the carbon Pesach puzzle. So you already know that it's going to still be kosher if you only have a partial thought of arelus and not completely arelus. So elalav hachiketani. So rather what you have to tell me is that there are two miutim in the Pesach. Uh, that the second part of the Pasuk when it says it means that um, only when everyone that you're thinking of is an RL is, does it invalidate the Korban 
Bechitema hu hadin lezerika dekula orla miha pasla. And then says Rabbah, maybe you'll say that the same thing will be true that if while I'm shechting the animal and I'm thinking about my future zrika, that if I think about exclusively Bob the Orel, that the zrika shall work for him, then it's going to uh, invalidate the korban. Tamalomar zos, bishchitahu de kula orla miha pasla, abol zrika afilu kula orla nami lo pasla. That that's why you need the second miyut of zos to tell you that only by the shechita, when you have exclusive thoughts of arelus, does the, is the carbon rendered invalid. But if your thought is exclusively arelus for the zrika, it does not invalidate the carbon. And that's Rabbah's basis for saying that even if, while you're shechting, you're thinking that the zrika is going to be for exclusively bab the arel, it's still a kosher carbon. Now, <coughs> maybe you'll ask the question, v'chitema, my kula de zrika? Now you'll ask the question, why should we be logically more lenient by Zrika than we are by Shechita? Why is it that by Shechita, we immediately use the Pasuk to tell me to say that by Shechita, you can passel the carbon with an exclusive thought of Arelus, whereas by Zrika, you cannot. What, what's, the, what's the logic there? Answers the Gemara, because as we established, that when you think about the wrong people while you're doing the zrika, that does not invalidate the carbon. The only time you invalidate a carbon is uh, for, for thinking about the wrong people is by the act of shechita. So therefore, it's more logical to be machmir about a machshava of shechita than it does to be about to to be machmir about a machshava of zrika. So that's the line of reasoning that is presented on behalf of Rabbah. The Rav Chista. Rav Chista's argument is, what does Rav Chista say? He says, no, if your thoughts are about Bob the Arel um, uh, for the Zrika, so then it does invalidate the Karben Pesach. So Rav Chista says, Adarabah, He takes it to the completely other side. And he says, Tamuloimar v'chol Arel, Kula or Pasla, Miksasa Pasla. He says, when the Pasuk says, Kol Arel o bo, it means that only for the Shechita, if your machshava is for exclusively arelim, it passels, but if it's partially arelim and partially mulam, it's still kosher. Aval zrika afilo miktsasa nami pasla. But he says that, the, what does the word zos tell you? The word zos tells you that that's only true by the shechita. But by the zrika, I'm going to go to the completely other direction. Zrika is not more liberal, not more lenient than shechita. Zrika, we have to be more machmir than shechita. That by shechita, we can at least uh, uh, say that it's kosher as long as you have partial thought of, our, of, of mulim, of, of circumcised people. But by zrika, even if one of the people that you're thinking about when you're thinking about the future zrika is uncircumcised, even if you're thinking about Bob, Dick, and Harry, and Bob is the only RL, and Dick and Harry are mulim, they're, they're circumcised, so then it's still going to invalidate the korban. Why? Maybe you'll argue that no, zrika should be the same as shechita, that just like by shechita, as long as you have partial thoughts of mulim, it'll be kosher, so too by zrika. Tamulomar zos. That's why you have the second miyot of zos. That teaches you what? Shechita hu lo pasla, that only for shechita are we lenient to say that as long as one person is a, is a, is a, a gemalt, that it, the carbon is still kosher. Abal zrika afilu miktsasa pasla. But by the zrika, even if only one person is an RL, and you're thinking about that one person together with other people, you invalidate the entire carbon. Now, you'll ask the question, we gave an, a logical argument, according to Rabbi, why we should be more lenient by Zrika than by Shechita. Now, you, Rav Chist, are saying just the opposite. Why should we be more machmir by Zrika than by Shechita? my chumri de Zrika, what is the chumra of Zrika over Shechita? He answers, de lo mikva pigol ela bizrika. He says as follows, that the establishment of pigol is only finalized at the time of zrika. Now, I need to sort of explain this just for a moment so that we get clarity on this. I mentioned to you before that if a person has a machshava of pigol at any stage of the avoda, if he has a machshava, I'm going to eat a kazayas or more of this karban at the wrong time, then he is subject to kares for having not only disqualified this carbon, but doing it specifically shalom bismana. Now, I should point out that you don't always get kares 
for having a puzzle machshava. For example, if I think to myself, I plan to eat a kezayis of this carbon outside the temple, I've disqualified the carbon. But do I get kares? No. Kares is only for chutz lizmano, it's not for chutz lemekomo or for some other kind of psul, a, a, a psul machshava. Now, how do we, th- there's another halacha by Pigel, and that is as follows. The only time I'm subject to kares is if the only psul of the korban is the machshava of chutz lizmano. But if there are multiple psulim, let's say, while I do the shechita, I'm thinking of eating a kezayis chutz lizmano. And then when I do the kabbalah, I'm thinking I'm going to eat a different kezayis outside the Beis HaMikdash. In that situation, I've certainly disqualified the korban, but I'm no longer subject to kares. Because I can only get kares if the exclusive psul is the psul of pigel of chutz lizman. But if there are multiple psulim, then I'm not subject to kares. So it's a, it's, again, it's a, one of these paradoxical halachas, right? So if I pile on additional psulim, I don't get kares anymore, right? So now it turns out that I have to wait until the entire avoda is completed to establish whether I'm liable for kares or not. Because if I'm in the middle of the avoda and I've had a machshava of chutz lizmano, I don't know whether I'm going to get kares or not until I finish everything else in uh, bekashras, doing it properly. But if at, at any future stage I have another puzzle machshava, like to say chutz lizmano, so then I won't get kares from my machshava of chutz lizmano that I had earlier. Is that clear? Well, do, we, do we understand that principle? So then it turns out that at what stage will I know, will I establish whether or not I get kares? Yeah. At the last avoda, which is the zrika. So therefore, since zrika determines whether I get kares or not for pigol, argues Rav Chista, that's the reason why we should be more machmir for the avoda of zrika than the avoda of, of, of shrita. Okay, because zrika establishes pigol, <coughs> And no, the earlier avoda establishes pigel, and therefore, whereas my machshava for the for the avoda of shechita will still keep the carbon pesach kosher, even if some of the people that I'm thinking about are arelim, but we have to be more machmir by zrika. But if my machshava for the future zrika is that I'm thinking about multiple people and one of them is Bob the Orel, then it's going to completely invalidate the carbon pesach. Okay. So now the Gemara says, um, the Gemara says, Maskif la Ravashi. Ravashi challenges <coughs> the Gemara's suggested explanation of the machlokas <coughs> between Rava and Rav, between Rabba and Rav Chista. Mimai dahai v'chol arel kula mashma, dilma hai v'chol arel mashma kol duhu arla. So Ravashi is questioning the entire premise of the exegetical part of these arguments between Rabbah and Rav Chista. He says that the whole premise is that when you looked at the Pasuk that says, Zos chukas ha-pasuk kol orel lo yochal bo, you learned that the words v'chol orel lo yochal bo means that even if one person is an orel, I'm sorry, that only when all the people are in orel, you're not allowed to eat the carbon Pesach if your machshava was for everyone being an orel comes along in Ravashi and says, How do you, where do you see that the words kolorelo yochalbo, that means that only when everyone is in RL. I can learn the Pasuk just the opposite, that the word kol is a reboy, to tell you that even if only one of the people is in RL, then he's going to inva- that you're thinking of, that's going to invalidate the carbon Pesach. And maybe that's the way you're supposed to learn the Pasuk, and therefore Kosov Rahman Azos and that's why the Torah has to write Zos Chukasa Pasach. Because just because when if I only have the words kolarel, that implies that even if one person is an oral that I'm thinking about and everyone else is mulim, it still invalidates the Korban Pesach. And therefore the Torah writes Zos as a miyot and says, no, only when everyone that I'm thinking about is an oral is the Korban Pesach going to be possible. Loshna bishchita veloshna bizrika. And therefore, you don't have an extra pasuk to make a distinction between the shchita and the zrika. And therefore, Ravashi says the whole premise of creating this 
divide between Rabbah and Rav Chista to be either more makel by the Zrika or to be more machmer by the Zrika is completely artificial. It does, it's, not, it's not real. And therefore, Rav Ashi says, Ela Omar Rav Ashi, so really, what's the real machlokas between Rav Chista and Rabbah? Rav Chista and Rabbah Baha'i Kra Kamiflagi. They're not even arguing on what you suggest that they're arguing on. You see, we thought initially, and this is what Rashi speaks out, we thought initially that the machlokas between Rabbi and Rav Chista is when I'm doing the shechit and I'm thinking about the future zrika, I'm thinking about Bob the Orel uh, uh, doing the zrika on behalf of Bob the Orel, and it makes no difference whether Bob the Orel is part of my chabura or he's not part of my chabura. The fact that he's an Orel is going to be a disqualifying factor. Comes along Ravashi and says that's not at all the correct explanation of what they're arguing about. They're arguing about a case where um, where uh, Bob the RL is um, is like Rashi explains. We're talking about a case where Bob the RL is not part of my chabura. And my thought is, while I'm doing the, uh, while I'm shechli and I'm thinking about the future zrika, I'm thinking about Bob the RL, who's not part of my chabura, doing the zrika on his behalf. And the question, therefore, is the fact that I did it for someone. I'm thinking about someone who's not, who's outside the chabura. Does that invalidate the carbon pesach or not? And here's the machlokas. They're arguing about the following pasuk: the near tzolo lechaper alav, alav velo al chavero. The Torah in general says that whenever you're going to uh, be doing the avoda for any carbon, you have to have in mind, especially for the zrika, that it be done on behalf of the person that needs to have the efficacy of this carbon, and that usually refers to the people who are part of the chabura. Right in the case of carbon pesach, so you have to be thinking about the person who's bringing the carbon, and not about the loal chavero, not about his friend. Rabba savar chavero dum yedidei, mahu de bar kapara, af chavero de bar kapara. That Rabba is of the opinion that the reason why we can be makel when my machshav is doing the zrika for Bob the RL is because the only time that my thought about the wrong person is going to be invalid is if that other person is capable of bringing the carbon Pesach himself. I'm thinking about a guy who's capable of bringing the carbon Pesach that's not the owner of this carbon, and therefore I, I invalidate the carbon. But let's say I'm thinking about a person who himself is not capable of bringing the carbon Pesach. So Rabbi says that that's not, a, that's not an invalid machshava. That's not, a, that's, not, that's not a machshava that's going to invalidate the carbon because the Torah only invalidates it when you're thinking about the wrong person who himself could have, could have been subject to this carbon. But since an RL is not in the parsha of carbon Pesach at all, then thinking about him doesn't, doesn't, is irrelevant. It doesn't create any psul at all with this carbon Pesach. To so therefore, to the, to the exclusion of when you're thinking about Bob the Orel. Since Bob the Orel <coughs> cannot bring the carbon Pesach anyway, so then thinking about him is completely irrelevant. It does not invalidate the carbon Pesach. He's outside the, he's outside the Machana. Yeah, he's outside the, the Parsha completely. Yeah. The Rav Chizda's no, opinion is no. Hi, Orel Nami. Kaven the Bar Chiyuvahu Bar Kaparahu. Hoel the Iboi Misake Nafshe. And Rav Chista looks at it totally different. He says, you're right. Right now, the Oral is not capable of bringing the Korban Pesach because he's uncircumcised. But he's a Jew. He's someone that, if he were circumcised, would be chayv in the Korban Pesach. And if we could, in theory, circumcise him right now, he would be in the Parsha of Korban Pesach. Let's say, medically, he can't. Let's say he's got hemophilia, God forbid, right? And he's not able to do But since, theoretically, he could be circumcised, we say ho'il, we say that in theory, like remember that principle of ho'il, in theory, since in theory he could be subject to the carbon Pesach, we consider him to be a member of the Jewish people who's in the parsha of carbon Pesach, and therefore thinking about him for the Zrika does invalidate the carbon Pesach. And this is where we'll hold it for today.